Thank you, and good morning for joining us today and spending part of your week with us. Uh, as um, Dr. Lou said, my name is Robin Conyers. I am the administrator at uh, CHI Health's Lasting Hope Recovery Center, um, and my official title is Vice President of Patient Care Services uh, for the Behavioral Health Service Line for CHI Health. Um, before we get started in talking a little bit about our presentation today, I would just take a moment and ask that each of our panelists spend a few minutes just introducing themselves. Um, Louise? What would you like to know about? Um, just, <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Well, we could put it, where you're where you're from, okay. uh, your title, okay. maybe how long you've been in nursing. Um, I am employed at UNMC in the College of Nursing, and I'm the director of the baccalaureate program there. And I've been in nursing for many years. We're not going with numbers. There you go. That today. works. That's okay. That's all right. <laughs> Jackie. Um, I'm Jackie Miller, and I have been at Creighton for um, about four and a half years in some capacity, um, and I run the DEU model at Lasting Hope. Ben? My name is Ben. I'm a new nurse at Lasting Hope, and I'm a recent graduate, and I'm getting my master's at the Med Center currently as well. And where are you a graduate from? Uh, Nebraska Methodist College. Okay. Please. My name is Elise. I'm a nurse over at Lasting Hope Recovery Center. I'm one of the student nurse instructors um, with the Creighton DEU program. Um, I've been in psych for about seven years and been practicing as a nurse for four at Lasting Hope Recovery Center on uh, QP. Tiffany? I'm Tiffany Lofgren. I'm one of the house supervisors. Um, I'm a student nurse instructor for both Creighton and Methodist. Um, been at Lasting Hope for nine <coughs> years. Thank you. So you've heard a little bit about the DEU model, and I imagine some of you are kind of pondering what does that mean, what does it stand for? And so um, we've asked to kind of kick off the, the panel discussion for um, Louise to spend a few moments just talking about the DEU, the Dedicated Education Unit model, and, and how that has the impact in undergraduate nursing, what that is per se, and then we'll continue um, questions through our panelists. Sure. So the DEU actually started in New Zealand as a way to get students clinical experiences in rural settings. Uh, just like here, you can't take eight students to a small critical access hospital because it, they just have the patient load to support that. So um, it's made its way to the United States and is used in a variety of places around the country to do rural nursing education so students have that experience. In the meantime, we've also discovered what a strong clinical model it is just in general. So the model is, for those of you that aren't familiar with it, um, a staff nurse takes his or her usual patient assignment, and then typically two students, and they serve as the primary instructor for those two students, with a faculty member who has general oversight, but is not typically involved in the minute-to-minute -minute care of the patients. Um, as we've implemented the model, some things we've discovered about it is that it really facilitates faculty's ability to do critical thinking activities with the students. Since we're not there, and my background is acute care, so pardon my um, examples, but rather than being in the room doing procedures and giving medications and all of the minute-to-minute -minute care, faculty are freed up from that because the staff nurse are supporting that so that we can do the questioning and help the students put together the pieces about that patient. An advantage of having the staff nurse do that, minute-to-minute -minute care, is that they are absolutely current with all of the policies. If a new directive came out the day before, they should know that, whereas the faculty member might not quite be that up to speed. So that's an advantage. Um, we expect that that staff nurse caring for just their usual patient load will have uh, more intimate knowledge of those patients versus a faculty member who is covering eight students or more and all of those patients with them, we think it improves quality and safety as well. This is not a criticism of the traditional model with faculty and students, just some advantages, we think, with the DEU model. Another advantage is our ability to use a variety of areas in the hospital that also, like the critical access hospitals, can't support eight students. So we were never able to take students for clinical to those settings, and now, using a DEU, we can, because the faculty member doesn't have to be on the unit with the students all of the time, but rather can cover multiple units as they're doing their critical thinking activity with students. So that's just a quick and dirty overview of the model. And if you have questions later, I'll be happy to elaborate on any component. Thank you. So this um, next question is both for Louise and Jackie. Um, would you both please comment, and Louise, I think you did a little bit, about how the DEUs compared to the more traditional clinical rotations relative to the skill attainment, your students' level of confidence, and the team building really on the part of your students? 
Maybe Jackie, you want to start first? Yeah, absolutely. Um, in the traditional setting, a lot of our students will go in and they'll be paired a, um, a patient and they will get to review the charts and um, see the basic care. But they end up following a lot of that tech role, which we're probably pretty familiar with. It's, it's what I, as a nursing student, did myself. Um, so they're kind of missing the observation skills um, and being able to really assess the environment uh, for any of the things that could occur that could trigger the patient or trigger the unit or even just make or break the day. Um, so I've noticed that my, my students are able to go into a unit and say, you know, um, it's a little cold on the unit, maybe we should adjust the temperature. Whereas maybe before, that wouldn't be something that they would hone in on. Um, just even, this one patient is kind of um, interrupting the milieu a little bit. Um, a lot of times the students weren't picking up on things like this. Mm -hmm. So the students will actually take a, a part in trying to manage the milieu, whether or not that means one of them will go sit with the patient that maybe is struggling through something. Um, I also don't see them struggling as much with asking some of those difficult questions. So the first day or two, um, just asking, are you suicidal? Or do you feel like hurting somebody or yourself? Um, they still kind of stumble through that. But as they start to progress, it, it almost rolls off their tongue. Whereas opposed in the traditional model, um, they just kind of sat and talked to patients. And, and most of our students would say, we, we hung out all day. That's, that's not what psych <laughs> nursing is about. Um, <laughs> you really need to be observing and, and picking up on all those little cues. And was somebody's foot tapping when you were asking some of those difficult questions? Um, and my students are picking that up now. So I think that's a huge benefit. Um, in addition to the comments you made, I think that um, because the staff nurses are really so much more integrated in the unit and in the patient care, they can facilitate experiences for students that a faculty member cannot facilitate. Part of that might be um, care conferences. So if you are not, if that nurse is going to a care conference, he or she will take their students with them versus a faculty member being sort of an outsider, because sincerely I think that's how they're viewed, saying to somebody, do you mind if they come? Well, that student's not in the same position when the faculty member is making the request is when the staff nurse is saying, this is my student, come with me. It just sets up a whole different uh, opportunity. Um, another component is, um, uh, skills like getting to call the physician. Again, that staff nurse has so much greater knowledge of that patient. They can facilitate that sort of skill building for a student versus a faculty member who's covering many more patients and simply doesn't know the detail on any one patient to be able to facilitate that. Um, the other piece that we heard from students and honestly had never occurred to me was that when you go with an instructor in a traditional clinical, you are with a different nurse almost every time you go. Some of those nurses love to teach and do a great job with students. Other nurses don't prefer to teach and really don't really want the students with them. So that comes through to the students and can have a real impact on their learning that day. In a DEU, you have nurses who have said, I want to do this. I want to work with students. The students are with the same individual each time they come. So they're not starting from square one each time because it's a different nurse. And that's fair enough. The nurse has to make certain that his or her patients are safe. So no criticism of that. But when the nurse already knows you and knows what your abilities are, you get to move farther, faster, because you don't have to start over proving up every time. So that's another real advantage. And going off of that, um, I've had a lot of my students comment on how they actually feel as a, as a part of a team um, and very integrated into the field and they leave having a better knowledge base of just how to interact with mental health patients no matter what area. Um, they feel comfortable being able to handle them on our med surge units or on our critical care units, um, pediatric parents, um, and they just feel welcomed into the culture of nursing, as opposed to some of the more traditional models. Again, no criticism. Um, but they actually feel like they're supported by their fellow soon-to-be colleagues. And it's a strong recruitment strategy, this clinical model, because 
as you indicated, students feel part of the team. They really do. Why would they go someplace else when they've been welcomed so nicely as a part of this team? It's a comfortable place for them to go to work. So it has been a very strong recruitment strategy that we've found. It also is a strong confidence builder. Because for a student to hear from a staff nurse, you did a good job, means a thousand times more than if I as a faculty member said, nice job. Because really, you know, I'm just the faculty member. I'm not a real nurse in their eyes, sin sincerely. <laughs> the first time students saw me in scrubs, they're like, oh, you're a real nurse. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> so, so that was very telling for me. But for those staff nurses, those are real nurses. They get it. They know. And what they say is real, as opposed to what I say. It's my job as a faculty member to make you feel good about what you do, right? So... Um, so anyway, that has been a strong confidence builder for students as well. It also goes back to some of that passion too that we were talking about, the passion for the for mental health nursing. Um, they're not just seeing it from us. You know, I, I'm very passionate about what I do, otherwise I wouldn't do it. Well, my SNIs are just as passionate, and that's why they're in, in the trenches every day, and that's why they're helping these people. And um, the nursing students see that, and they speak volumes about it. That's what I, that's what I want to be. You know, that's the nurse that I want to be, and that's the nurse that I'm striving to be. Um, and so I need to keep pushing myself in order to do that. Mm -hmm. um, Jackie, would you, mint, would you talk about uh, if there are any differences that vary between the DEU model through Creighton's DEU uh, versus uh, university's DEU? Um, any I know there's quite a few similarities. I'm not quite sure if there are differences of how the two schools or universities um, structure that program on the campus. Um, well, I cannot speak of UNMC's as much, um, but I can definitely speak of Creighton's. Uh, when we first started, um, we utilized a DU model that was out of Portland um, and adapted it to fit ourselves a little bit better. Um, the traditional DU model, faculty aren't always present. Um, and that works well on a lot of our medical floors, but we know that mental health is a little bit more intense. Um, our students face a lot of struggles, um, and so just being present for them and letting them know that we're here as well, um, routine check-ins with them, um, has been extremely helpful. Um, so I don't ever leave the campus um, until my students are all gone. Um, I do routine walkthroughs. Um, I'm, I'm there to help out on the units. I'm there to help if the nursing staff are very busy, because we know caseloads can be a little hectic at time. I'll get them started. I'll get them out. I'll get them involved in things if still needed to. So it's almost a mix for us of the traditional with the DU model, but our SNIs are taking over the charting and the medications. Um, we have a very structured system, so in a four-week time, we continue to let our students progress. The first day is usually just observation. You know, you get to go and see what the nurse's day looks like and how do they organize and how do they prioritize and um, which patients do you need to see first? Uh, do you need to look up medications? Um, meet some of the doctors, get familiar with the units. Um, second day, you know, sit down and watch them chart, ask those questions, get used to some of those terminologies that you've been using within the classrooms. Um, and then as the weeks progress, you know, week two, they're charting. And then their SNIs will sit down and actually go through the charting with them and make sure that it's, it's connecting. Um, outside of, obviously, the special care unit, um, they get to do quite a bit of hands-on experience. Um, I step in as needed when I realize that the units are a little hectic <coughs> to make sure that my students are able to process through some of the situations. Um, I think most of the SNIs will tell you that uh, special care is, is usually where my presence is felt the most. And that way then if there is a, a, an incident that occurs that requires a timeout or restraints, um, I'm sitting there making sure that they're able to process through it. If they need to have that outlet or that discussion, there's somebody right there in the moment so that we can explain all the trials that are happening. Um, I've also found it beneficial to have post-conferences on a daily basis with my students because um, we all know that it can be trying sometimes and we may haven't been exposed to um, some of the situations that our patients unfortunately have been. We, we definitely need to process through that with them. Um, I usually tell them, you know, is there anything that's going to keep you up tonight? 
And so that's, that's how most of our post-conferences start. Is there anything that's going to keep you up? Um, and my students have really appreciated that because then they get to see that not only are the SNIs asking it, but then the faculty is also stepping in. Um, and then I do a lot of walkthroughs, and during those walkthroughs, I meet with my SNIs and the students. And we talk about, hey, what were some strengths for today? What were some weaknesses for today? What's a goal you want to work on for tomorrow? Um, so the students actually get to hear our collaboration with the SNIs. Um, so we're working towards that mutual goal. What, what benefits for the students can we see? Um, is there any area that would interest you? Is there anything that you have expressed an interest in um, different kinds of patients? So. I would say the models are pretty similar. We also had University of Portland come as a consultant when we started the um, DEU. I think the biggest difference is faculty presence on the unit. We are not there at the start of the shift, although we're on campus. Um, but that's intentional. We want the students to step up and manage if, let's say, they're, we call them CSIs, their CSI is not there that day, then we want them to be empowered to say, is there someone who would work with us today? And they manage that beautifully. The unit also really facilitates. They know if the nurse called in sick or something else happened. Um, we typically do not go into the room trying to eliminate confusion about who's in charge and who's doing what, making it very clear that nurse is in charge. She is, the, or he, the primary instructor. Um, and it's difficult to be in all units at the start of the shift. We have two students in the burn unit. We had two students in psych when we were using that unit, two students here. So no way for a faculty member to be on every unit. So we chose to approach that a little differently. But I would say otherwise, um, the models are pretty similar. I think what Portland would tell you is most important is to tailor the model for what works between your school and your facility. So the traditional or the, the true model for a DEU is that the entire unit would become a dedicated education unit and that's the only kind of clinical you would have on a <coughs> unit. In Omaha that's a little challenging and I don't know if you guys have been able to accomplish that, but um, with so many schools at all of our facilities, it, you, you really can't go in and just block the rest of the schools from an entire unit. So what we've done is make them a dedicated education unit on our clinical days and then the rest of the week they're free to operate in whatever way works for them. So that's a little different than the Portland model. But again, they would, they would encourage anybody to do what works best for them. Thank you. I would say that in our research after launching the DEU now, we uh, may will conclude our second year of uh, having the pleasure to host uh, Creighton University and Methodist University um, <coughs> students on our campus and have been working collaboratively with um, UNMC on the Emanuel campus in launching that model. We found that we were the only second psychiatric facility to offer this model in the country to our students. So we do believe we are giving those students that are coming in in their psychiatric clinical rotation a unique opportunity. Um, I had heard about it uh, through our organization on a med surge floor and they had talked about the nursing directors at that time at Creighton had spoken about the retention of their their staff the recruitment of these students and just the the benefits um, definitely outweighing the risks of the experiences that these students were given and as you can all appreciate uh, being a rare breed in nursing recruitment of psychiatric nurses is difficult so really try to jump on the bandwagon of what this DEU model could mean for psychiatric experiences and exposure to our students mm -hmm. and from a um, administrator standpoint or an employer standpoint, I'm happy to say we are reaping the benefits. Um, we have had the pleasure of onboarding several new nurses um, based on their experiences with this DEU model over the last two years into our workforce. And Ben will share a little bit about, that, about his story here um, as we continue to move through our panelists. Um, before I invite Ben to speak, I do want to spend a couple minutes asking Tiffany and Elise um, who are um, our student nurse instructors or our clinical instructors for the, the students that uh, come on to the DEU rotation. What would you say um, you both have experienced as the benefits of this DEU model for the students that you have supervised? Um, first of all, personally, I really enjoy teaching. I like co collaborating. Um, I find that it's rewarding to myself and also the students. Um, it gives you a chance to get that second opinion um, before going into that room. Um, or, and then you're also getting the team approach. Um, we're really looking at when special care um, 
is very focused on a team approach because someone else's patient's going off, so you're kind of working with them, and then so some, then you're kind of helping each other out. So it's kind of one of those things that you're teaching them to go ahead and use that team model. Um, so I, to me, that benefits both them coming into the situation and also you, because um, you start off right away with that team model. Um, students are uh, able to chart. Um, the one thing that we're noticing currently um, is some of the um, students that are coming from a more traditional school, um, they're not knowing how to chart. Um, so we're really having to make sure that they how to make a note for the day and how what things to kind of make, um, what symptoms and stuff to really mention and um, what observations. So we're mentioning those kind of things and it allows them to get that practice ahead of time um, when they're there for the day. Um, so those are the benefits that I kind of see. Um, I would have to say the same thing, but I also see a lot of like that they get the real nursing psych experience. Um, I, every, I see with every single patient um, that they see the difference between what they learn in school versus what psych nursing is really like, which is completely different. Um, in the book, they see it's very black and white, like med surge. You know, they have hypertension, so you give them this medication. Well, in psych, just because they're schizophrenic doesn't mean, and they have voices, doesn't mean that they're going to have a certain medication. There may be several medications they take or just different medications for... Um, like say you, it's a blood pressure medication, but we use it for nightmares, those types of things that you don't learn about in school. Um, and you get to work with the students for several days, so you get to know them, and so you really get to challenge them more um, and broaden their horizons on thinking. Um, I really like to challenge my students, especially in medications. Um, they know that I will drill them on medications. Um, <laughs> So they're going to pass their psychopharmacology chapter yes. in four <laughs> um, And they know that I want to know, if you're giving this med, why are you giving it here versus, you know, why would you get it outside of here? Yes, your book says this, but the off-label use, what are we using it for with this patient? Um, and they really do gain a lot of appreciation for the nuances that is psychiatric. Um, and I see them get really excited about psych. Um, as far as they weren't before, I see, I've had a number of students who were like, they had never thought of getting into psych because of what they learned in the book. But once they get there, they see this whole different world and experience. Um, and I know I've had a few nurses who have chosen to go um, the psychiatric nursing route versus what they had originally thought that they were going to do um, because they do get this practice. Um, they get to go with us and, like she said, perform the daily tasks um, do the charting, and they see the differences um, <coughs> in the auditory hallucinations or suicidal ideations. Yeah, they learn about it in the book, but how does it look in real life? And learning that like schizophrenia isn't just one type. There's several different types and several different nuances that go with those diagnoses that they don't learn in school. Um, and it really fascinates them. I think they, they just learn a lot more with this model versus we do have another school who comes to us who are, is not a DEU, and I find that our DEU model students are a lot more um, aggressive with their learning. They do ask more questions. They want to know more, um, especially, like she said, like the second week that they're there, they're really gaining confidence versus the other um, models to where they don't really ask questions. They're very fearful about asking questions. And so I don't feel that they ever truly get the psych nursing experience. Thank you. How would you say um, the DEU model has impacted you in your practice? I would say like the daily tasks, um, just the little things we do every day that we don't really think about. Um, just because we do it every day, it's just automatic to us. Um, really gives us an appreciation for how important those things are. Um, because a lot of times I always tell my students, if I'm going too fast, tell me to slow down. Because I do just have my routine. Um, and to me, it's just second nature. But to them, it's like, okay, why are you doing this? Um, you know, and teaching them 
and, and reiterating to me the importance of these little things that I'm doing for my patients that I just automatically do. So it kind of gets me more excited about my job. Um, and in turn, also, it's, I, I can see them getting more excited about it as well because the more positive I am about it, I see it reflecting in them. Um, it just kind of gives me a new appreciation for all we do for our patients um, that we don't really see since we do it so often. I think sometimes we become desensitized to the, the little joys that we have, and so they kind of help bring that out um, in us and bring it to the forefront too for us to remember. Yeah, I, it's one of those we get in there and we sometimes we get to where we're going to work um, routinely every day and we do the same routine. Um, so it helps us stop and think about the enjoyment of coming to work, um, applying our knowledge um, so we kind of get our, there's a little bit of enjoyment there. Um, and then applying what we learned um, and what, to me it's like clinical knowledge. Um, the trends that we've seen, um, we also know the patients and um, just allowing to how to build that rapport and um, for me, myself, I've, it's made um, an interest for me to go back to school um, and look at what I want to do and further myself, mm -hmm. so. Thank you. So Ben, as an individual who has participated as a student in this model, talk about what you saw really as the benefits of this DEU um, experience and perhaps if you could even share any um, comments perhaps by your colleagues or your classmates at the time that were also with you or the ones that perhaps were envious that didn't get a chance to experience this model and what you Yeah, absolutely. I think the DEU model was, was just a completely drastic uh, change from what I was used to. My psych rotation was kind of at the end of my nursing school education. So typically the way it worked for me as a student, uh, being a very like nervous student too, going into like those med surge rotations and and they go, okay, Ben, your nurse is he or she, whoever it was. And then I see him walk down the hallway. They're like, hair's all frazzled, that stressed look. And they're like, oh, <laughs> two students today. I'm like, oh, this is going to be a really fun day. <laughs> um, and then so going to that DEU model, like that, um, I don't know, just lasting home specifically, but um, I never had that experience, I think, because the nurses that participate in it really want, that they really want to teach and they want to integrate you. Like I would, go on the unit and the first thing you say is, okay, what do you want to do today? And that I, had, no nurse has ever asked me that um, anywhere else. And that's not to diss any other nursing discipline because they're all really great and have a lot of respect for them. Um, but I noticed with, the, with this model, they really try to integrate you. And another thing I liked about it, the nurses kind of going on top of that, they, if there's like downtime, if they have like half hour, 45 minutes, they'll be like, hey, you know, why don't you, do you want to see like what a case manager does here? And then, so you go hang out with the case manager for 30, 45 minutes and they talk to you and they're really great. Or I got to participate in a, uh, like a couple board of mental health hearings that they have on the special care unit at Lasting Hope, which is really cool. I know no other students got to experience that elsewhere in their psychiatric rotations. And even there, the, the APRN really guided us along and, um, and to speak to my classmates' experience, um, I was the only one in my group that ended, going in, that ended up going into psychiatric nursing. Um, you know, a lot of them are those nurses that are like, yeah, I want to be OB nurse or pediatric, pediatrics nurse, and that's what they want to do. And they dreaded psych rotation and just had really, uh, really apprehensive about it. But afterwards, I still talk to them today, and they're like, you know what, that was actually a really good time. Like I. Didn't, I still don't want to be a psych nurse, but it was still actually a really great time and not something I expected and I went into it dreading it and it was actually really fun. And I think that's definitely um, the DEU model. I think that's speaking uh, through there. Um, so talk a little bit about, so for those of you, we keep, we keep hearing a reference to special care. So special care in our facilities is our intensive psychiatric care unit. Um, because we're ingrained on other campuses and medical areas that have ICUs, uh, when there's codes or particular interventions that need help from the whole campus, this was our way to kind of differentiate if there was a need that you would come to special care, which was a potentially psych-related issue or a psych area on the campus. So um, just to speak to that. Yeah. So Ben, talk a little bit about your, your um, experience with that, do you, how did that prepare you to enter into the workforce? 
Um, because you graduated and then came right on board working for us. And so how was that transition for you? Did it, how did, in ways, did it prepare you? I think it made it tremendously easier. My interview with Lasting Hope was actually someone, a nurse that I was with for two or three days. So the interview was actually like a conversation. <laughs> it would, um, and it just, I was not nervous at all. It was just like a 45 minute talk about psychiatric nursing and how I think I'm prepared or, you know, it wasn't, didn't seem like a scary HR interview at all. Um, and that I think made me really comfortable. And uh, the first day, um, actually I was with Elise, my very first day um, on orientation. And I was familiar with Elise and um, she asked me about meds and stuff, I'm sure. And, um, and yeah, so, and I was already familiar with lots of people and kind of making those first introductions are always kind of intimidating especially with physicians, which I actually got to know a couple through the DEU model as well. Um, and they're also involved, actually, when you sit down in the, the treatment teams, so, you know, the nurse will introduce you, like, oh, hey, you know, how's it going, and glad you're here. And I heard that a lot, actually, in um, the DEU model, is glad you're here, which is pretty cool to know that at least you're valued in, in some way, even as a student. And so I think another great thing about making that transition into work was I felt more comfortable asking questions which I think is huge as a nurse, and especially as, you know, on the unit you have quite a few patients as a precepting RN and lots of things going on, and then you have a, a student or a new orientee under you. Um, I think as a new hire, it's kind of intimidating to ask what you, what you think might be dumb questions, like where's the peanut butter or something like that. Um, you can just feel okay asking those questions because you've had kind of a little bit of rapport with them already. And um, I think, I was prepared more for the RN role, I think, through the DU model, kind of Bridget alluded to earlier about people, uh, other students, like, oh, well, like, I just saw them hand out, like, trays all day, or um, not really understanding what the RN role was. I think that first day, I was like, okay, yep, I've seen nurses do this. Even though if I didn't know the specifics, I knew that that was under their role or responsibility, um, which I know none of my um, classmates have. even. The ones that went into psych, I don't think had that little advantage. So I think it was huge entering uh, the workforce for sure. So talk about um, even just your patient workload in entering the workforce from the DEU model, working side by side with your in nurse instructor. What were things that skill sets perhaps that you learned or that were ready to adapt versus a traditional model? You're on the unit, you have one patient, you're kind of blend into the walls or hide behind the nurse station until your nursing st staff are pulling you out versus a DEU, you're with your nurse, as Jackie talked about. I mean, Louise, you have you know, your, your patient caseload with that nurse for that day. And how did that prepare you for maybe the shell shock of entering into the workforce yeah, or was yeah. there so much? Um, I think there was a little bit of shell shock, but certainly not as much. Um, what, what was nice is the nurses would have their, their caseload and then say if something happened, they would take me aside, okay, like, well, this is what happened there, and typically this is what we do, and this is what you have to do, and this is what's expected. And then so it, I wasn't just kind of like fumbled along and drug along. It was like they actually took the time, or we'd be sitting there, and uh, the nurse would say to me, okay, like, well, what do you notice about that patient? Like, kind of watch their behavior. Tell me what you think. And that was really cool because I, I got used to the terminology because when you go to chart, you use, you know, specific psychiatric terms to describe behaviors. And that would have been totally new to me um, if I wasn't for those nurses that kind of, I guess, pause to take a moment to teach you. And um, I think that's really key for sure. Thank you. One thing I want to go back to, too, um, and ask Louise to speak a little bit about on, um, from an educator standpoint, what were some of the challenges that you all faced um, concerning the state board uh, with the with the implementation, if you will, of this DE model, and how did you go about addressing those? Because um, I know we have made great strides really since the, the beginning of that, so maybe you could share a little bit of. So um, the regulations that govern education, govern education were last done in 2006, so as you can imagine, we've moved ahead <laughs> despite the regulations. And they're currently in the process of being revised, it's just that with all of the changes in uh, political things, the governors, et cetera, and staff at the state board, it has slowed down a great deal. Um, the DEU is not consistent with the regulations for uh, undergraduate education. Um, 
we did it to begin with anyway, and then when we asked the state board about it, and we did get permission from them to pilot it and to, but every semester I was going back asking permission to add another unit and taking them data, and so it, it was kind of a long process. We have arrived at the point where the State Board has approved the DEU with um, the requirement that we submit a waiver each semester. Sort of like if you have faculty that don't have a master's degree, you would submit a waiver to the State Board asking that they be allowed to teach for your program. We do the same thing with the DEU. We provide them the list of all of the nurses who will serve in the DEUs for that semester with a request to allow them to teach for our institution that semester. So the schools that are involved in this do that every semester. Um, if a school wants to start a DEU, then they need to also go to the state board with their proposal and um, get approval for that. When the new regulations are finalized and approved, the DEU will be a part of the regulations and we won't have to do that anymore. But the attorneys were concerned that since this doesn't fit with the current regulations. We needed to have some sort of record of the fact that uh, we were communicating with the state board about this. So um, it's much better now than when we started. And really the board has looked at how can we facilitate this because we've taken them the data to demonstrate what a strong clinical model this is. So they appreciate that and have tried hard to facilitate the process. So what are the requirements to become an SNI or a in staff instructor? Um, bachelor's degree, and um, 18 months of clinical experience in that unit. So it used to be two years, but our nursing for workforce is so young that getting nurses with, enough nurses with two years experience was proving pretty challenging. And we had piloted using nurses with 18 months experience and found that our outcomes were fine. They did a fine job, so the board approved that. Oh. And a bachelor's degree in nursing or a bachelor's degree in a related field? Bachelor's degree in nursing. Mm -hmm. Thank you for clarifying that. Yeah. Yeah. If um, they do not have a bachelor's degree in nursing, you can include that as a part of your waiver. Mm -hmm. But because of the fact that um, they're taking two students, they really are a direct instructor. In a bigger way, kind of, than the preceptor role, the State Board has said, we think that's pretty important to have a bachelor's degree. I think, any other comments from our panelists? Otherwise, well, I think we'll open it up to the, to the group for questions. Sure, please. Um, just to kind of go on top of like how even the nurses that weren't interested in psych had a positive experience, I was just gonna say that I think that also contributes to lowering the stigma of mental health in general because those nurses are people in public and when they hear about a mental health policy or anything related to the mental health field, they can say, well, you know what, actually, I was there and I had this outcome, so. It all goes to supporting uh, positive outcomes for the mental health field in general, I think. Yeah, adding to that, I think I completely agree. Um, one of the things I always tell the nurses who are with me is, yes, you may not go into psych, but no matter where you go to, you will, or you will always see our psych these psychiatric patients. No matter what unit or floor you're on, you're going to see a varying degree of psychiatric illnesses, and you should know how to take care of them as one thing I've noticed um, a lot, um, I did a six month rotation at Bergen in their float pool was that the nurses did not know how to handle um, psychiatric mental illness patients. Nine times out of 10, if there was psychiatric patients on the floor, I had them, which was fine because I love psych, but at the same time, the other nurses were like, I have no idea what to do. They're very frazzled and I think it gives them a new appreciation on how to take care of these patients on general, um, general floors. Yeah, our hope, you know, by inviting and having the pleasure to host these students on our campus is, and, and I, I have the pleasure of meeting their very first day, uh, most of the time before they even step foot on, our, on a unit. Um, and we talk about their anxieties, their concerns, their anticipations, what, are they, what do they think this rotation is going to be like. And then I also have the pleasure to meet with them their very last day. And we review what their comments are, what their fears were, what their anticipations were from day one, and what they presumed it was going to be like to the actuality and the actual experience. What did they like? Did they have any ahas? Was it as they anticipated? And I can tell you, hands down, uh, complete 360 of what they expected, uh, initial thoughts of fear and anxiety. What if I say the wrong thing? How can I ask someone if they're suicidal? What if I make them angry? Uh, what if I don't know what to say? What if they ask if I can give them a hug? Um, just a variety of things. Am I going to be safe? 
do I need to worry about my safety, my family's concern that I'm coming to this rotation? Um, and on the back end, talk about uh, how amazing of an experience these patients provided for them and for the staff that um, my hope for them, and I tell them on day one is, while psychiatric nursing may not be an area you choose to specialize in, my hope as they complete their rotation with us is that an increased empathy for what our patients suffer from, um, an increased understanding so that when you are caring for them in the ICU or in the ER or LND and they talk about their psychiatric diagnosis or you have to assess um, their psychiatric mental status, that you don't become hardened or feel as it's a burden to ask those questions and you feel comfortable engaging in that dialogue with them. Because as Elise mentioned, psychiatric people that, people that suffer from mental illness or psychiatric disorder, they have babies, they get cancer, they have heart attacks, um, they have strokes, they're in our care in all walks of life. And so the skill sets and the experience we hope to offer them at their time with us ultimately is to reduce and break down that stigma, um, also to increase um, that level of empathy and understanding. And then hopefully my selfishness is a recruitment into the, the psychiatric field, whether that's within CHI Health or just really within the community. There certainly aren't enough of us to go around, but I get very excited when I have eight or 10 students in the room and I get one, for example, I met with yesterday, all nine were L&D or peds. I had one <laughs> surgery and one ICU and one undecided. And I got really excited by the undecided. So there's some hope, there's some hope. So um, instructors kind of shake their head when, they, when they're visiting with us and, and watch the students because it's inevitably L&D, 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 um, and ER and ICU, so. But they're not all gonna get a job in L&D. This is true, so right, right. So we just keep working, <laughs> we just keep working on it, so. But I would tell you that the students just say, and then we'll open it up um, on their post-conference with me, that they really felt this DEU model, they learned an ability to collaborate. They learned what it meant to work within a team and to not function in silos. As you all can appreciate in an inpatient setting, our patients aren't isolated to their rooms. They're out and they're about and they're engaging and it's not just one nurse, it's all the staff. It's the therapists, the techs, um, the nurses, the EBS, dietary staff. The increase in communication and the ability and the importance from um, just documentation as well as verbal communication and handoff. Um, the importance of delegation. They've learned that when you're with a nurse and you have five, six, seven patients and something goes awry, we've got to work as a team and how can I delegate that out? They talk about time management. How do I, my day doesn't go as we all expect it to go when we're coming out of report. It just doesn't. Um, they also talk about the ability to critically think. And that most importantly, I do believe has been talked about, they feel more prepared entering into the workforce with a realistic view of what it's gonna be like for them when they step in to, to become our colleagues, if you will. So um, just some highlights from my, my opportunities and, and time spending with them. So with that, we'll just um, maybe, by, if you wanna raise your hand, we'll have folks come around with microphones and we'll be happy to field any questions perhaps that you have. And I, I didn't do a time check. Does someone know what time it is? Do you know what time it is? Sure. So can see what. We got about, I think we were scheduled to 11.30, so we got about 25, 20, 25 minutes or so. Michael, I'm first. Sure. Oh, okay. I have a question, and any of the panelists can answer this. How are you? Sorry, as, as, you, as you're asking questions, can you just introduce yourself, oh. who you represent, and then the question? Okay. Thank you. So I'm Bridget Vaughn. I work for UNMC. I'm a nurse practitioner and a research coordinator. My question is for, for any of you. How are you identifying and recognizing strengths in students when you get them to pull that out of them and encourage them to go into psych? You know, we know the ones that have great um, uh, IV skills <laughs> and physical assessment skills and things like that, but how are you really identifying those students who not are only uncomfortable, or who are comfortable asking difficult questions, but then know what to do with the information when they get it and can relay it appropriately to other providers? Um, just how are you really, you've got it and you really ought to develop this. What do you do with the students that you see like that? So Jackie, uh, I, oh, I was gonna have Jackie share a story of one of our. I, um, I, I haven't really had to push a whole lot. This model has, sorry, this model has done a wonderful thing in um, making students find their passion when it regards to mental health. Um, I had a student who came in who had absolutely no interest in anything that was not medical related. It's pretty much verbatim. Um, spent two days on the units, came to me and said, I can't imagine myself anywhere else. And I said, what was it about it? And she goes, it's everything. She said, it's everything. It's the patients, it's the team, it's the, 
it's the basic skills that you use. It's the caring, it's the nurturing, it's, she's like, it's just opened up an entire different world to me um, and loves it. And we hired her. <laughs> yeah. She has one more, year, yeah. one more year to go, but she's a nurse tech for us and she's doing fantastic. Literally second day out, she said, how do I get a job here? Mm. And I said, well, Lord, we're gonna go march up to Robin's office <laughs> right now. <laughs> um, other ones just gain a different appreciation they gain a different appreciation for, oh, I know I'm not going to do this, but when I walk on a med surge unit and I have somebody who's maybe suffering from some depression due to a new diagnosis or something, how am I going to be therapeutic and how am I going to allow myself the time to be able to sit for that five or ten minutes? And how am I going to be able to make sure that if I need to implement that new care plan or if I need to make that referral, um, how do I go about it? And this model is showing them how to go about it because of the wonderful nurse instructors that are saying, look, you might not recognize this, but this is what's going on, and this is what we do because of it. Please. The student that she's actually referring to, I, I know who she is, and one of the first things that she told the other students was that I was very challenging and hard on her on medications, um, <laughs> that I would drill her on medications every day. Um, and that was one of the things that she appreciated because, you know, like I said, just because we're giving this med, say Depakote, okay, well, what are we actually giving them Depakote for? They don't have seizures, so why are we giving them this? And it really made her look into things more, um, into more depth. Um, and she also, I think, and I don't know if this maybe just lasting hope, how much we are just a very small community. Um, we're a, a big family. They, when we go into treatment teams, they get to interact with the doctors, and the doctors, I guess, don't seem as intimidating because they do have regular conversations with us and do value our input um, a lot, a lot more than I've seen in other practices. Um, and I think it makes them feel more comfortable because they do have that experience and they feel comfortable um, asking us questions and knowing that we are challenging them and like just when they do get it right or if they don't get it right, okay, <clears throat> go look this up and come back to me and tell me. And so when they do, then I can give them, you know, that's a great job, you did great on this, or that's a good try. What else do you think about, you know, or, or what are you seeing in the patient that you think that this could be about? And it really makes them stop and think more. And when they do get the right answer, which nine times out of 10 they do after they think about it, um, and have some leading questions, and they, I, you can just see it on their faces that, okay, I'm understanding this, I'm getting this. Um, it's not so black and white, it's gray. And so they can really use their own terms and their own thinking that it's not just this way or this way, it could be all of these things. Um, and I think that they really get excited um, when you do say, yeah, that's great, you did a great job at finding this, or the patient's getting agitated and they notice it, and they're able to pull from that, and they just get really excited when they see these different things that they're recognizing um, versus this isn't in the book, but I know these things. Thank you. Thanks. Microphone coming around. Oh. Hi, um, my name is Patty Ely. I work for UNMC College of Nursing uh, in Kearney. And um, my students are in clinical only uh, 24 hours. We do simulation, and it's very valuable, but um, they, they make all the comments that all of you have made, and, and we're not doing a DEU right now, uh, but we were looking at doing a DEU, and some of the comments that I have received is that um, for that small amount of time, uh, two days, um, it, it, it isn't worth it. And so my question is, do you think that a DEU is valuable even though the students would only spend two 12-hour days there? I think it is. I think even two hours in a DEU model is valuable. They're honing in on the time management skills and the prioritization that they would be missing out on. Um, they're learning from their colleagues. They're team building, um, they're really getting immersed in that environment, whereas normally I don't think that they would as much. I think building the confidence would be essential for them. And Patty, we can talk about this more later, but I, oh, good. I think <laughs> <laughs> 
One of the questions you guys should also ask yourself is really, is 24 hours enough in any clinical setting? I don't think it is. I don't think you get past, you know, where's the bathroom to, to be able to focus on much else in 24 hours. So, uh, and so we will talk about it more, but it's a question for you and the faculty to just ponder and are there other ways to approach it to give them more time in various settings? And say, and currently we have a school that has um, they come two days a week. Um, it was kind of a late notice, and um, they don't seem as prepared. Um, their students are not interacting with the nurses, um, so they don't feel part of the team. They don't. They're to me, they're not going to walk away as comfortable as what the DOU students are. Um, so we're try like the nurses that are trained with the uh, or that are SNIs are trying to kind of do what we've been doing um, and kind of teach them and incorporate them. They are not able to give the medications and stuff like what we would technically be able to do with the other model, but we're tr trying to kind of keep them close to us, but it's still not the same. Um, mm -hmm. So I think it would be definitely worth it. And I know, Carney, Richard Young, we've had some conversations to reach out to start those dialogues so that we could look at what the feasibility would be for us to host and to be able to support that. So. And kind of supporting on what Tiffany said, I, I am on the floor with these patients or with the students, um, and I do the, the SNI and the other facility, the other, um, and I will say that the DEU students, even if it was 48 hours, have a lot more confidence in asking questions. I've noticed that the other school who just supervises, um, and they're told to go to groups, which is great. Um, but actually getting the true psychiatric nursing experience, they don't get and they still don't understand. <clears throat> like they don't get a look at the charts, they don't get a look at the meds, they don't see the hands-on experience versus just kind of watching on the periphery. And so they really don't understand and they don't really ask a lot of questions because they're not really seeing what we're doing. Thank you. Thanks. My name's Kathy Phillips. I'm a psychiatric nurse practitioner and a clinical nurse specialist at the Landing Center out in Hastings. And bearing in mind what we know about the provider shortage, mental health shortages of both RNs <clears throat> and other professionals in mental health, you've addressed education and recruitment. I'm wondering on a retention level, have you observed or measured um, in terms of nurse retention, your, your employed nurse retention, or their job satisfaction um, in the nurses on the DEU compared with those that are not on a DEU? You know, we've not done anything formal, but um, we, and you guys can speak to that. And then the research that was brought forth even prior to the implementation of um, your clinical staff's level of engagement and retention is, is quite a bit higher. Um, the one, instructor that law that we lost from a retention his wife got a promotion and they moved to south dakota but we have sustained and retained um, all of our instructors um, over the last two years to some level um, i think it does as elise alluded to a little bit it, it brings them joy to recognize those students and also engages them it takes more work out of their day um, just for all of us that have that opportunity to have supervised at some level but the return on that to know you're making a difference and having that ability to impact someone's experience um, i think just kind of re-engages their um, emotional commitment to the to the program um, our student nurse um, our DEU students that we have hired, um, we've had one resignation yesterday because he's, or what day was it, Ben, that you resigned? <laughs> Last week? Uh, because there's this grant that UNMC got to um, provide tuition for students while they're getting their advanced degree and pay their stipend for tuition, and Ben has, I believe, is <laughs> moving towards that. So whoever gets it, you're gonna have a gem, so. Um, but again, Sad, bittersweet for us, because we love having him here, but definitely know he's going to contribute to the greater community of the need, so um, I thank you. I would share with you one, uh, a story from one of the nurses who said to, um, to us that she was actually getting ready to leave the unit, this is acute care, um, and wasn't sure if she was going to leave the facility. She just had become kind of bored. She was an expert in the setting and just wanted to do, have a little more challenge in her day. Um, being able to part, be part of the DEU provided her that extra challenge, so she decided not to leave the unit. So 
I can't tell you how many nurses feel that way about it, but it does just, it brings in that little extra challenge once in a while. It's not all the time. So you get a little break and then you get to do it again. And I, I do think that that's been beneficial for many of the nurses. We've also launched um, with Creighton and with Nebraska Methodist College of Nursing uh, research studies uh, with this model. Uh, we're doing um, with Creighton uh, and with Methodist focusing on the staff's perception of and their role as a student nurse instructor, the patient's perception of having students in this model, and then also the student's perception of um, psychiatric patients. And so those are both those are three areas that are currently in process that um, our um, nurses have been parts of too. Nothing ready to, to publish or present at this point, but but very excited about that opportunity too. And just to kind of speak to that, even though I am departing, I think the <laughs> DU unit um, honestly has made me kind of like it, I have like an itch to teach now. Like when I graduate, yes. I, I want to somehow be involved either with Lasting Hope or some other uh, teaching format. I, I never had that before, but seeing the nurses that uh, taught me, um, and they kind of seem to have like fun with it at some points, I guess, but, um, and I kind of like that. They seem excited about it, and I, I want to have that experience, too. So I think in a way of retention, I think you're actually also increasing probably future educators mm -hmm. as well. Um, maybe not right away, but years down the line as people graduate or go through other um, educational master's programs, too, so. Great. Thank you. Yeah, I guess you're To piggyback on that, um, myself and one of the other instructors are both currently in school for our master's to do that, so. Other questions? Uh, my name's Diana Masney, and I'm an RN supervisor at the Norfolk Regional Center and Inpatient Sex Offender Treatment Facility. Um, several of you are instructors at, uh, in these nursing programs, or directors in these nursing programs. Why isn't there more emphasis on psychiatric clinical hours? Uh, this, uh, Mrs. Healy, I believe, said 24 hours. By my own experience, I had none in my RN training, and in my LPN training, I think I had two hour-long classroom discussions about psych nursing. And I think that's a lot of the um, problem with recruitment. People don't understand what we do, and we've all talked about, and in different areas, you know, uh, psychiatric patients get cancer. They, you know, mm -hmm. they have other issues. So wh why isn't there more emphasis, you know, to expose our students coming up because uh, somebody who went is like, oh, I don't want anything to do with that. I don't know anything about it. And it totally mm -hmm. exposed them and opened their eyes to it. So who? I would say that um, it's not that faculty don't value that. I think we all would agree that psychiatric experience is extremely important. It is also extremely limited. And so what we try to balance is, do we give more students a shorter experience or fewer students, a longer experience. And I'm not sure anybody really knows what's the best approach to really help students appreciate and learn from the clinical experience. But that's what we struggle with. Psychiatric clinical experiences are very limited. I know going through school, I wasn't at one of these schools, and I won't name it, but my psychiatric nursing experience was really non-existent. Um, I did a couple of rotations at a homeless shelter um, and really just took some blood sugars and sat in on parenting classes. I already knew I wanted to go into psych, so that was something different for me. So to be able to do this DEU model um, really excites me um, because I do get to show them the true nursing experience that I didn't get to have. Um, and it, it does show in the students that they do get really excited about this. Um, and even if they don't go into psych, like you said, they, um, they do still get excited about psych and they understand it. But I have seen more that are, like you said, are like, oh, okay, this is what I want to go into instead. Um, I've had several people say, this wasn't something I ever thought of. They were very scared of it. Um, but now they are comfortable with it. They love it. And that's what they want to do. And it, I think it goes to huge retention. Gail's gonna wants to make a comment. I at least maybe pass the microphone. Yeah. So I, I think you've touched upon a problem. Um, we're we're working around the fact that there are inadequate clinical hours instead of stepping up and saying no. I mean, so there are core clinical courses, right? Med surge, peds, women's, psych, community. Do we have what's that? 
We have concept-based. Concept, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. whatever. But I mean clinical areas. <laughs> but can you imagine having 24 hours in pediatrics? Why was that acceptable? You know, that psych would get those. Why aren't we advocating state board exam questions? Same thing for NCLEX. They have consistently reduced the numbers in spite of the environment in which we know 50% of everyone has a mental health problem. I mean, why aren't we actively saying, this is the minimum that's acceptable, this is the way it should be? Uh, 24 hours is observational. I don't see, if, if we expect to recruit people into this specialty, it's not going to happen. And I mean, we should be on the front end of that advocating. I've got a mic, so I'm going to ask my question. I'm Marty Christensen. I work at Douglas County Community Mental Health Center. Um, my question is the education that's provided for the student instructors. Do you have a set curriculum? Do they have to prove competency? How do you evaluate that? We have them come to an eight-hour orientation day, uh, education day, sorry, not orientation, in which we talk with them about um, our philosophy of education, we spend a lot of time using videos that we've created to show them different student scenarios, and then they have an opportunity to talk about how they would manage that. And we focus a great deal on how you would evaluate, how you support their critical thinking, um, and I think that's probably the highlights of what we cover with them, and then an opportunity for any questions. In addition to that, there is always a faculty mentor assigned to every unit. And as we make rounds on the students, we are also making rounds on the nurses to see what questions they might have, uh, what else they need to facilitate themselves in that role. So it's not a, here, just watch this video and we're done with you. It, it's an ongoing uh, opportunity for development. Is that yeah, and, yeah. and then with our, within our facility, our preceptors have had to attend our, our organizational preceptor course as well, in addition to the college's requirements. Great question. Other? Hi, thank you. My name is Renee Claiborne, and I work for a nonprofit called Building Healthy Futures. I am an undergraduate uh, nursing degree from the Med Center. I was trained in the late 80s and early 90s, and so this approach um, is exciting to me. My current role is director of school-based health centers in Omaha Public Schools, and I would say much of my role working, and we don't have un, uh, undergraduates in our model, I work with uh, pediatric nurse practitioners and family nurse practitioners, and I would say my role over the last eight years has been really developing workforce development for this group of nurses. They are not prepared to deal with the psychiatric issues that they see day in, day out in all of their patients. So when you talked about expert motivational interviewing, I've, our organization has invested in that development for those um, practices. My question is really what you talked about earlier, is that scaffolding approach? Mm -hmm. And does the university or the other systems that are here, um, I really think that we're missing an opportunity. This is great for undergraduate experience, but with um, healthcare delivery models being in unique spots, and we're gonna be moved to delivering care out of necessarily inpatient and residential, how do we better prepare our workforce through a scaffolding approach? I'll look to my academic That's colleagues. You, you, you want an answer today? <laughs> <laughs> That's a to-do. We'll check that off next year when you come back. It's an, yeah, excellent progress question. Yeah, it's an excellent question. I don't think I'm prepared to just provide an answer today, but it's certainly worth mm -hmm. our um, thinking about and addressing. Yeah. Julie, um, um, we have a comment from um, Julie from UNMC. Do you want to grab the microphones right there? Julie, to your right. Oh, the microphone. Yeah, Please. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think that's a great question. Um, oh, who are you? Oh, I'm Julie Hofek. I teach uh, psychiatric nursing for the UNMC College of Nursing. I haven't been an undergraduate for a little while now, but I think one of the answers is that all instructors need to be comfortable teaching maybe that uh, a, a certain level of psych uh, mm -hmm. interventions, um, psych uh, uh, diagnoses, 
the problem areas. And I think that that would be the scaffold that uh, Dr. Stewart you know, talked about. So until we get it integrated across the board um, in whatever um, clinical area the students are in, um, uh, they won't feel comfortable taking care of the patients that they see in any clinical setting. Uh, I think it's a lot, it's, it's a important problem to address. Thank you. Looks like we have time for one more question in the back. I don't really have a question, cool. uh, but just a comment. I'm Leanne Connolly. I work for UNMC in uh, Norfolk, and we, and I oversee the campus there for the undergraduate and all the other things that we do. Um, I wanted to just provide some information about um, our rotations we have on our campus. and. And frankly, I, 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 I am not the expert in it, but I will mention that we have a concept-based curriculum. And so what that means is uh, we have you know, certain concepts that are taught in the undergraduate program, and those concepts can be implemented as they are observed in a whole variety of settings. Oh, you know, infinite. <laughs> Wherever nurses are, you can find those concepts. And so uh, what I have come to learn over the years that I have been on this campus is that different campuses, you know, take those concepts and apply them in different places. And we have the concepts of communication. Now, Louise, you're going to tell me exactly what they're called. But I will tell you that as, as we were listening, as I was learning this morning in the, in the uh, discussion, uh, the comment about having communication and therapeutic communication in the first semester, my mental brain went, check, we've got it. Um, and in our case, uh, on our campus, and I'm only speaking to our campus, our mental health experts, and they are experts, kind of come in in an interprofessional way and collaborate with the faculty who are teaching that content to make sure that we're addressing those things because what I also heard again this morning the very fact that uh, individuals with behavioral health needs, mental health needs are everywhere. And so we do have clinical experiences because they are everywhere. But we're also fortunate in our particular setting that we go to uh, the regional center, to Valley Hope, to the inpatient behavioral health unit. And our, our students on our campus, if I were to add it up, I think they're probably around 70, 75 hours or so, or so, maybe 80, 85, I don't know. It, it kind of varies by campus, but, but I think it's in large part in our case because of that concept-based curriculum now, if I were to take all of the hours where they have introduction and working with individuals who have mental health needs or behavioral health needs, it's going to be a lot bigger than 80. Does that make sense? Yes, and probably that relates a little to the scaffolding point that you were making in that we do see that in every setting, in every school. I mean, it doesn't matter which campus you're on, which school you're at, where you are for clinical. Um, but I'm not sure we have taken advantage of the opportunity to help students focus on those particular components while they're there for clinical. And so that might be how we start to integrate and build more of those skills as we have clinical in the variety of settings we do. Well, thank you for your attention to our discussion today and your contribution to your questions and thoughts and comments. Um, I think all of us are here the rest of the day or are certainly available for off one-off conversations or follow-up if you have any um, follow-ups that you'd like to do or if we didn't get a chance to answer any questions perhaps that you have.